Hi everyone, I'm Rachel from the Preschool Development Centre and today we're going to talk all about teacher self-care and what that actually means and literal things that you can do. If you're a teacher and would like to know more about this, please like and subscribe or join my mailing list down below and you'll get a free base and emerging curriculum planner. Okay, so I decided to make this video because I've seen a lot about teacher self-care, teacher positive mental health, everything like that in the last few days on my Facebook, on my Instagram, and it's even popped up on YouTube too. And you know, all of these things tell us, you know, to take time for ourselves. They tell us, you know, to go for a nice walk in the sunshine, you know, eat your lunch quickly and then get outside and get some fresh air and it will break the day up. You know, make sure that you take five minutes to have a cup of coffee in the morning and make sure you have a beautiful bath with candles everywhere every night. And I mean, guys, come on, you know, who has got the time? You know, before starting the preschool development center, I certainly didn't have the time. I was coming home every night to do work, to plan, to find exciting lessons that would be good for my kids. I was catching up on observations, which, you know, you, you can't, you can't do that. You can't live like that. I was completely always on. I was always working. It didn't matter what I was doing. And so where, where can I find the time for those things? You know, I, I see the videos and I see the articles and I think, are you a teacher? Because you know, unless you completely ignore the amount of work that you have to do, there's just no way that you can take care of yourself. And so I really want to show you ways that you can actually take care of yourself and make time to do those lovely things that we all want to do. But, you know, when you're taking care of someone else, when that's your job, you tend to put that first. It's a vocation. You know, you tend to put that person and those children before yourself and that's perfectly natural. I think it's a natural thing for teachers to do. It's really important that we find a balance and that is what I am about 100%. So I really hope I can help you today. Okay, so my first step for actual self-care for teachers is to pick a system. So I am a Montessori teacher, so Montessori is my base system. By system, I kind of mean your long-term plan. So, you know, you'll have your ethos, you'll have your daily schedule, you'll have your yearly schedule all done. If you have your long-term plan done and you do it really well, like you should not have to do that again. You shouldn't have to do it anymore. I find that sometimes, especially when teachers switch between schools or, you know, especially oh, new teachers coming out with, you know, balls of excitement and activities and lesson plans that they are just ready to throw into the world and they are just going for it. You know, it's, it's so important to, be able to do that for a really long time and prevent the burnout that everyone is talking about at this time of year. You know, so this this video is going up at the end of November. Everyone's getting ready for Christmas. Burnout, of course, happens all the time. But, you know, around about now, the shine of September has well and truly worn off if you are feeling stressed out. You know, you can't carry it through anymore. So having a system, writing it down somewhere that you have to look every day. So I have, I have the book now, but before I had the book, I had a folder where I would just have it in the front. So first part of my folder is my long-term plan. It is my ethos. It's what I'm about. Not just the school I'm working for, guys. I'm talking about you as a teacher. You need to define what it is that you want to put out into the world. So once you do that, it really hones everything else in. And every year, every month, when you go to look at this, you're going to remind yourself of that. And it really gives you a fresh outlook every time you open your folder. I really don't mean for this to sound cheesy, um, but you know, just having a positive note that you've written, that you understand, it's like a letter to yourself. And you know then every time that you see it that, oh, this is why I do this, you know, because I love it and I want to do this for the children. Okay, so your system is picked, your system is done. Now we are going to prepare the entire year and do it just once. And I know that this sounds intimidating. I know that it sounds absolutely crazy. Um, you know, that's this is why I do courses on these things, guys, because they can be intimidating and they can be crazy, but they don't have to be, okay? So I'm gonna just quickly walk you through this. Uh, we have our long term done. We've just done that. We have it in the front of our folder. Next, we are going to separate our folder into 12 months. We are going to write our themes for the month on the divider. We, you know, for September, 
I have all about me, my family, my community, and healthy eating in my body. So that's my four themes for September. I write it on the front, um, and I put my parents poster that I have made for September inside. Now, I do make new parent posters every year, but you don't have to if you don't change things. Um, you know, I'm telling you to prepare this once Prepare it once well and then build upon it here and there. So you're not going home every night trying to fill your week with activities. You're not going home panicking, you know, oh, what am I going to do next week? I have to make a materials list. You have it all done. Um, if you're just starting out on this journey, if you're a new teacher especially, you know, do this month by month and then you won't have to do it again. So next year, when you go to September, you won't be figuring it out. You'll just have it right in front of you, ready to start. And it was just going to cut all the stress out of your life like really guys like everyone who has done my course has said that it takes so much stress out of it just to have these things ready ready and done well so that you're not changing them every year of course you know over the first probably five years of my career I had about 20 different curriculums done you know I changed I did ABC I did numbers I did uh, seasons only I did um you know everything that you can find out of books you know, I, I did so many different curriculums and I found what worked for me. And then I stuck with that and I carried it through. So everything that I teach now, I am passionate about. I know everything about. I have amazing lessons that I do every year. And of course, I find new things and I add them in where I can. Um, but I do that because of the love of it and not because I have to. That's just a really important thing. So when you have your medium... Do that for every month. If you're just starting, as I said, go through every month and do it like that. And then every month you are going to add in your lesson plans. Now, this is where there is a lot of work and this is where you will be going home to do work, but you only have to do it once. You know, these are going to be your core lessons. You are going to research these. You are going to write them out properly. You are going to have space for reflection. You are going to stick them in this folder into the month so your short-term plan is your daily and weekly plans i normally recommend five to ten lessons planned per week uh, per theme so for every week you're going to have five or ten lessons done so you know that when you go in this is the book that i want to introduce this week this is the song we are going to sing this week these are the lessons and my lessons touch off all the areas of the curriculum that i want to teach this week so you don't ever have to do that again. As I said, you can build on it, you can tweak it, but it is done once. And every year from then on, you're going to enjoy teaching so much more. You know, take care of yourself, put the time in, organize yourself, prepare yourself. It is worth it and you are worth it. And when you do this work once and do it really, really well, you know, future you is going to be so grateful, trust me. I was after going through all those different curriculums and trying and testing things out. I was so grateful to myself for having done it thoroughly. And then the last step in my teacher self-care is to use it. So, you know, once you do it and, you know, you test it out, you try it out with the kids, you see what they like, you, you take out what they don't like and um, build upon it bit by bit. It is just going to mean that you can do your observations in class. You are not running around thinking, oh, I have to cut out, you know, 20 gingerbread men to make the Christmas cards. You're going to have that done because you've known a long time in advance that you needed to have it done. You can prepare them so long in advance. That's the organizational video I will link somewhere here. But basically, you know, if you have 12 A4 boxes, you can do all these things and keep all these little bits in one place and take them out, you know, you can follow the child more efficiently. This base curriculum that you're creating is going to leave the emerging curriculum that the children create open. You're gonna have time to spend on that and it's going to mean that your classroom is a place of magic, of inspiration, of fun, and of really, really meaningful and purposeful learning. I feel like I may have gone off on a bit of a tangent there. I didn't mean to. This, this is about taking care of yourself. This is about doing actual things that mean that you get to spend more time with a work-life balance that you 
can make last that you know you need the longevity of that you need this is your career you're talking about you know you're going to be doing this for the next 30 or 40 years uh, and unfortunately in early years education people don't last that long you know <laughs> not very many people do it for 30 or 40 years because it's hard you know those little people take up our whole hearts and rightly so and they take up you know the whole world of our classroom and rightly so they absolutely deserve to but you deserve to have a system behind you that works for you that means that when you leave your classroom you close the door and you go home and you have a personal life and you focus on your own children and your own family you know and you get to do things that you enjoy because you're not taking this home every day I hope that this was coherent. <laughs> um, I just, I had another video planned to record, um, but I've seen these things all over Facebook and I just thought, you know, I would put it out there. Um, if you're interested in doing a basic and emerging curriculum course, my mine isn't open right now, but it will be open and I will send links to in my email. So if you get the basic and emergent planner, it's free. Just sign up for the email down below and I will email it to you, of course and then you'll get information when I open that course again. So I really hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, please like and subscribe, and I will be back next week. I am going to do the best Christmas activities, and then I have some sensory box um, demonstrations coming up as well, which I'm really looking forward to. So I will see you then. Thanks for watching, bye.